now that my underpainting is complete, I want to start adding in the details on top of my painting uh, to individualize the spaces. So you're going to need to set up your area first for painting. So you're going to need some kind of paper underneath um, your canvas to keep the table clean. You'll need a container of water, which you can share with a partner at your table. And no more than three brushes, though you're probably only going to need two. Um, the big brush we used before and probably don't need it again. There's nothing on here that's sort of gigantic. So I'm going to put that away. You'll also need a scrap of paper. And this is where we're going to be uh, putting our paint, like a little uh, palette. So I'm going to take this paper, fold it in half, and then as I need colors, I'm going to apply it to this piece of paper, which can easily be tossed later on. This is great if you only need to mix little bits of paint. If you need a bunch of a certain color for all over the background, you may need to mix an individual cup for that particular color. So I've actually already started and put in some, you know, green up in here. I played around with some yellow. Some colors are going to be opaque, meaning that the color in the background doesn't show through the paint. And other colors like yellow are more translucent, meaning that we can see that color from behind come through in the paint. And it may require a couple of layers, um, but there's a trick you can do by adding a little block out white to your yellow, that can make it a little bit more opaque if that's something you desire. So uh, I'm going to paint in these kind of frame-like structures and I wanted to use um, a blue color in here. So that's gonna be pretty easy. I can open up my container and pull back the lid a little bit and take this little dabber and put some paint right on my paper. I don't need very much. Um, maybe the size of a dime or a nickel. I also know that I'm going to be varying that color a little bit and using some uh, sky blue sort of color. So again, I can pull back the lid, put a little dab of white there, and then I'll be good to go for this. So I'm gonna get a medium brush and uh, put a little bit of blue on my brush, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint in my shape. And I'm paying very close attention to the edges and as you go, you will start to notice that the lines are going to disappear. So our guiding lines may, uh, may disappear through the painting process. And you can decide later on if you want to make them stand out again uh, by painting over those lines with a really thin brush or uh, paint pens if those are available. Um, those would be some other things that you can use. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint this in, and you can see in some places it's a little streaky. That means that it's a little bit more translucent, and other places seem to be a little bit more opaque. To keep this interesting, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of white uh, to my blue, and have a little bit of a sky blue mixture. And I'm gonna go ahead and while the paint is still wet, I'm gonna add that in, and I'm gonna paint over this and go back into the area that I already painted and let the brush run out of paint. And then we get a little bit of a color change happening here, which um, I think makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, some of my students call this an ombre of color. Um, we could just call it a color change, whatever. And go ahead and put that in. So we've got a little bit of a change happening from dark blue to light blue. And I can do that on the other spaces as well. Try and use up the color that you have there. Uh, and if you feel like you're done, check with other people at your table, see if they need some blue or light blue. So between colors, obviously, you're gonna wash your brush in your water. Make sure that you're cleaning the collar of the brush as well as the bristles of the brush. And test it on a little piece of your background paper to make sure you don't see any blue. So let's say I wanna jump into another color. I want to do these little pyramid shapes, and those were going to be a warmer color. Um, I wanted them to be kind of a brown, and I know uh, we have brown paint available, but there's this little trick. If you add a little bit of blue uh, to orange, it will turn uh, brown, because it's actually making a chromatic gray. And I kind of like that color. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that to mix it in a little bit more blue, and now I get a nice sort of brown color. So there are many ways to achieve brown. You can mix opposites, 
We can add black to orange, uh, lots of different ways to do it. And then I can go ahead and paint in my shape. Now you notice this, we don't see the blue coming through uh, from underneath. So that means this paint is more opaque. Again, I'm being more careful towards the edges. As I paint this in, and I can be a little bit quicker when I'm on the inside of the shape because it's gonna have less effect uh, on there. So I've got it painted in brown. And let's say to get the uh, illusion of light, maybe I want this one a little darker. So I'm just gonna use some blue uh, and use the brown that's already on the brush. And I'll paint in this shape and make it look a little darker. So it'll give the illusion of space, like this little pyramid is maybe three-dimensional. Okay, and if I wanted to have a color change, uh, I could add some white to my brush, and I could even put some white down this edge, and then paint it across, maybe add a little texture, and I can make it look like that brown is sort of changing there. We also have the option of using textures. So we have a cup of um, modeling paste. Uh, we put a T on it so it's easy to know which one that is. And you'll notice that it's very thick. And you can apply it with a brush or you can put it into the space where you want it. So let's say I want to have this space to have some texture. I can put a little modeling paste in there. And then I could find a popsicle stick if I need to, or we have uh, painter's knives available, or you could use a paintbrush, and I can apply this texture stuff into that space. And let's say I want this space to look rough. Uh, once I put this in here, get it to the edges, I can just make some texture right on top of it and it will dry with this 3D texture in there. But let's say I wanted something more smooth. I can use my paint stick like it's a, a little knife and I'm putting like icing on a cake. Maybe I want it to be more smooth. Or I can even be more geometric about it and put little rows in it. Really, it's up to you how you wanna use that texture. Um, once that dries, then I can put some paint on top of it. You could if you wanted to uh, mix in a little color into this modeling paste and it will change the color, but it will be pastel. So now I've got sort of this uh, orange mixture of pastel and maybe I wanted to have some dots of texture inside my yellow sun. I can do that as well. So that's another way that you can apply uh, texture into a painting. So these are all different techniques that you can be using. Um, but remember, whenever you're done with something, wash the brush. Make sure the collar of the brush is clean. Test it on a scrap of paper. And look, that one is definitely not clean. So if I was to go into another color, it would kind of ruin that color. So you want to make sure um, that your brushes are really clean before you use it. Now that's perfectly clean. As you look at your water, if it starts to look like coffee, um, then you'll want to dump that out and get some fresh water. So we're going to continue on with our paintings. Now we're going to be doing detail and possibly adding texture, um, if you would like to, and make sure that it, you know, looks cohesive as you go. Check with your teacher if you have any questions.